Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick update on my experience with the Lenovo Yoga 9i 14-inch 2-in-1. Now, so far, I am very impressed with what Lenovo and Intel have done here. I mention Intel because this is powered by Intel's 11th Gen Tiger Lake i7, that is the 1185G7 with Iris XE graphics. Performance is absolutely bonkers. But let's start off with the display. This is a UHD 14-inch panel. Enjoy. I think that gives you a pretty good idea of what the performance is like, at least in terms of the display. F nearly 500 nits of brightness on this UHD 14-inch panel, uh, HDR capable. It is a really nice piece of hardware, and that's just one element of the 9i 14-inch convertible that you're looking at. So again, the retail on this machine that I was sent for review is $1,700. US uh, I believe it's available both directly with Lenovo as well as uh, through Best Buy right now. I'm not sure of too many other retailers that have it in stock. Um, I'd be including a link if I had one, but right now that pretty much sums it up. Now, in terms of other things I can tell you, they have changed quite a few things about this laptop besides the processor. Uh, Wi-Fi performance is pretty much on par with what we had with the C940. Uh, the soundbar has been upgraded, but to my ears, it sounds pretty much the same, which is a good thing. Size has also gotten smaller, which if you're familiar with the previous gen C940 14-inch model that I covered last year, it was actually a lot larger. Not literally, but it felt a lot larger. And to just give you a quick example of that, if I close this up right now, and I'm gonna keep it where it is in frame, here is my HP uh, Spectre X360 13T, which is of course powered by an Ice Lake Intel processor. And I'm gonna go ahead and actually place this right on top of this machine. And you will quickly see that it isn't that much smaller than, of course, the brand new 9i. And that was part of the reason that I went with the HP was because it had an OLED and could fit in bags that, of course, the C940 couldn't, even if the C940 had better audio. Now, this has a leather uh, coating covering on top of the aluminum chassis. For those of you that are wondering, uh, that's really a matter of personal preference as to whether or not you like that finish. But when it comes to hardware and overall performance, I'm stunned so far. Now, battery life, not stunned. So I was really hoping we were gonna have some sort of breakthrough when it came to battery life. I haven't seen that uh, as part of the experience. Let me get rid of that glare from the studio lighting here. So just be aware of that. Uh, in terms of charge time though, that is very impressive. So using the included 65 watt uh, power brick that comes with the 9i14, you will basically be able to charge this from completely zero to 100% in just a little over one hour. Now, in terms of battery life, if you're running in performance mode, which is easily, uh, you can toggle through that. This is the cool mode, battery saver, and then performance. In performance mode, you're looking at about five hours. Uh, that's with the screen brightness cranked all the way up. You have to remember this is a 4K a UHD panel, so that does play a role in battery consumption. Uh, but if you are willing to go into the battery saver profile and you know adjust the brightness to your own personal liking but not keep it beyond 50%, you're going to see far better overall battery performance. But remember, this is with that 4K display, as I just stated. If you were to get the 1080p configuration of this laptop, you will do much better. So right now, again, uh, around five hours of battery life with you know performance 
push to the max. Uh, if I take it down, easily getting seven hours, uh, but I haven't spent enough time to give you, uh, in my opinion, official battery life. Uh, that's just what my experience has been pushing it through the last uh, roughly two days. So I am impressed, uh, but it's more again about the performance because when it comes to the processor, uh, this literally outperforms Ice Lake, uh, for example, in 3D Mark by nearly a thousand points. So I haven't started video editing on this or photo editing yet. I've tried a little bit of gaming. You can see Rust and Call of Duty uh, World War II on there. And the gaming is amazing. I say that because, you know, with Ultrabooks, uh, Ice Lake gave us our first taste of being able to actually run games uh, at low and medium settings that traditionally you could never run on an Ultrabook. Well, here with Intel's Iris XE uh, integrated graphics, I am able to play, for example, Call of Duty World War II at 1080p with medium settings and keep solid frame rates, which is just crazy. So uh, I probably will end up doing a gaming demo of this machine purely for that reason, because you wouldn't expect this to necessarily be a gaming centric machine and it's not, but the fact that it can run modern titles like that is really impressive. Of course, it has no problem handling Rust. Rust is a really old game compared to uh, Call of Duty uh, World War II, but that just gives you an idea of its gaming chops, again, in spite of the fact that it does not have a dedicated GPU on board. So we are now living in a world where Intel, as much of the hype predicted with Iris Xe, can actually yield solid gaming performance in ultra portables like this that are a hair under three pounds. So really impressed. Uh, build quality, I already knew it was going to be great and I have not found anything suspect, no creaks, no wobbles. Um, let's talk about the keyboard. Uh, it's supposedly improved. I still don't like it as much as uh, the HP that I just brought into frame a little while ago. I think HP still has Lenovo, at least in the uh, 9i realm, beat with the uh, X360, uh, the Spectre 13T, well, that whole line, I think their keyboard is better, but that's really a matter of personal preference. But I do see a little bit of difference with this keyboard compared to uh, the previous generation in terms of uh, the bounce, if you will, on the keys when typing. Uh, but it's still a very good experience. I don't want anyone to take this the wrong way. Uh, in terms of uh, other things you should be aware of, I already mentioned the soundbar is supposedly improved, but to me, it just still is best in class. The C940 already had the best audio on the market, and I think the 9i just builds on that. I wish I had this sort of audio performance on my HP. Of course, the Spectre, pretty terrible speakers, but uh, it does have an OLED. Uh, I'll save that for a direct comparison, which will come, but just know already that if you are looking for the most powerful, lightweight machine on the market, you're looking at it right here. Nothing will outperform this, uh, even though this is just my initial uh, you know, update, review, if you will. Uh, battery life seems to be what I expected with the UHD display. Uh, pen input, because after all, this is a convertible. It does have a stylus right on the back. Pen input is solid. Um, I really leave that to my fiance more so than I, because she is the artist. She has the best level of feedback to give to all of you that are digital artists that want, that want the best performance out of a two-in-one possible. Uh, it is good. Uh, is it going to blow away the competition? No, but it likely is better than what you'll find on the majority of machines out there. Uh, so overall, a quick recap, battery life is where we expected it to be, but the quick charging capability is definitely better than with the C940. Remember, only a little over an hour to get a full charge on this battery. Uh, the processor performance is phenomenal so far, even though I haven't gotten to 4K editing, I already have a strong suspicion that it's going to blow away uh, my Ice Lake HP that's to the left. Gaming, you already know, it does blow away the HP. And it does get hot, but that's, you know, after doing really intensive stuff. So uh, gaming will do that. I'm sure that video rendering will. Uh, it seems like it doesn't get as hot as my HP, but pretty close. And I think that pretty much rounds things out. I mean, for, for those of you that missed the unboxing, besides the fact that, you know, it has the 
uh, ability to rotate 360 degrees, type A USB port, uh, two Thunderbolt 4 ports, which, you know, it's nice to have a little bit of future proofing, uh, but, you know, if you already have Thunderbolt 3, you probably are already living on the bleeding edge. Headphone, microphone, combo jack there. And on the other side, a power button, really clean design all around. And of course, the pen in its garage, which, um, you know, I wish it had a larger profile than this. I think that's going to be the biggest criticism that you'll find from me and the my other half. Um, but in terms of performance, again, really good. Um, some of the best performance you're going to find from a Windows-based machine without going over to, in my opinion, Samsung, who right now uh, really does make the best uh, pen input uh, two-in-ones and tablets. They're really the, the cream of the crop. But overall, uh, I can already tell you this is the ultra portable to beat here in 2020. I'm still waiting on the HP uh, 14T, that's the 13 and a half inch Spectre, but even that laptop is not going to have uh, the same processor that's in here. So uh, the 1185 G7 is the chip to beat in ultra portables right now. So I don't see anything else that knocks this off the block currently. Uh, and one last note about this, which is the all glass uh, palm rest. I have mixed feelings about it. You know, it it's really smooth. It's cool that this is all glass. The trackpad is uh, clearly different. There's no, you can feel a click, but there's no mechanical click to my understanding. It's actually just feedback. Uh, I have no problems with the touchpad at all. I think it works really well. Uh, but because this is one piece of glass, it is hard to differentiate where the trackpad begins and ends without, I mean, you can physically feel it ever so slightly, uh, but I think it's just a matter of getting used to it. Uh, so it is a fingerprint magnet in my unboxing. I said it wasn't, but it, if you can't tell in this video, it is collecting fingerprints uh, pretty well. So that's just something to be aware of. And that the same is to be said for the leather on the top of the machine. It's like, I like it. It's, you know, a texture, it's grippy, but in the same vein, I could just see this over time getting stained dirty and being relatively impossible to clean. Even from just putting the HP on top of it, we got some dust marks, which traditionally with a metal chassis, you know, you would just wipe it off. But I do worry about this leather over time. Uh, but I do really love the fit and finish of this machine. It is making me question whether or not I want to pick one up and sell uh, my Spectre that's to the left. Uh, but the Spectre still has an OLED uh, panel, and that's something that I wish Lenovo would bring to this machine. Uh, also, do wish that we had a micro SD card slot. Uh, that is something that I just feel like a machine like this should have. It's got the room on the deck, no real reason. Another thing you should be aware of, uh, the 16 gigs of RAM that are inside this specific build, it, those the RAM is soldered. So if you go to customize one of these machines, don't forget that. Uh, you'll regret uh, not knowing, I guess, or the ability down the road, not being able to upgrade uh, the NVMe drive that's a half terabyte in here. A little small for my taste. I mean, my Spectre has a two terabyte, but that is a custom config. Uh, I would have liked to have seen them go one terabyte, but at the end of the day, the performance is really good. So it's not, it's not a nitpick on my end. It's just something to be aware of that the half terabyte I would have liked to have seen on such a premium, powerful Ultrabook at least a one terabyte uh, drive, but the C940, uh, you know, suffered from the same uh, situation, scenario. Uh, and th that can be upgraded. So you can drop a four terabyte in here or even an eight. I haven't tried. Maybe I will play with that. I don't have a bare eight drive, but I do have a bare four terabyte uh, Sabrent that I could drop in if it fits. So that might be something that I do uh, if Lenovo is okay with me peeling this sucker apart. But overall, this is, again, uh, the best two-in-one that I've seen here in 2020. Lenovo has outdone themselves, and while the style may be a matter of personal taste, the performance and build quality is not. I mean, this is really setting a new mark and redefining what we can expect, not just from uh, processing power in a sub-three-pound uh, Ultrabook, but also gaming. I mean, I just cannot believe that I was playing of call, you know, call of Duty on here in full HD. Didn't have to drop down to 720p, but full HD with medium settings and solid frame rates. And that's why, as I said, I probably will do a gaming 
demo on this machine. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them, hit that like button, and as usual, please feel free to subscribe and please stay safe and have a happy Thanksgiving, if you celebrate it. Later.